Okay. Ah, turn the light on, bright hat, and turn that stupid so guy off. Okay. Ah, oh, back to some PCV Macishness. Ah. Oh. You know, I don't even know I how... I still say this show should not be called PC versus Mac. We need to come up with a better name, because it isn't... You're right. It isn't Miss Pac, Miss, or uh, whatever, PC versus Mac. It's uh, Tech Babble or whatever. Yeah, then I have to straighten out the number system. <laughs> like, cause we don't want to, yeah, can we say it like, okay, first it's episode 217, and then it's episode 20 something. It's like, what? It's like, <laughs> it's like everybody's head would spin. <laughs> but yeah, it, you're right. It's more tech level than PC. <laughs> it's like, uh, anyways, uh, uh, Okay, yeah, um, in case y'all are wondering about that title up there, uh, apparently I hate Linux. I didn't know I hate Linux, but a lug has straightened me out. They have explained to me that I hate Linux. Well, I didn't know I hated Linux. It's only the operating, it's only the kernel of the operating system I use on a daily basis. It only powers almost every machine here, but apparently I hate Linux. I didn't know that. You know, so I have no idea how to react to that. That's like, that's interesting. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, right, uh, Ubuntu yeah, yeah. Apparently, if you don't know that Ubuntu is just the best Linux OS ever, you hate Linux and open source. Um, I well, don't know yeah. how to react. <laughs> it's like, uh, it's, uh, I don't know. I, did, I, I saw a pretty good article on Ubuntu by, uh, I think it was Matt Hartley. Um, is Ubuntu becoming the poor man's OS 10? <laughs> well, if that's all the Ubuntu knots, yeah, it surpassed it. You know, that's <laughs> like. And you know, I'm not gonna lie. I'm sitting here running it right now, and you know what? There are certain things I really don't care for about it. <laughs> no, no, it's a, the, the, I I could care if somebody wants to run Ubuntu. I don't care. You know, you run your distro, I'll run my distro. It's the if I don't like some of the things it does, it means I hate Linux. Oh, you just don't understand. They're doing it like I understand. I disagree. That's why I'm going over here. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, let's get into some actual stuff. Um, you, anyway, a good saying is a program designed for inputs from people is usually stressed beyond breaking point by computer generated inputs. Very true. A program designed for inputs from people is usually stressed beyond breaking point by computer generated inputs. And that's and that's who the the guy who said that is uh, we're paying our respects to. Yep. Uh, I don't. It's kind of sad, really, that nobody's really noticed that Richie passed away. It's. And Dennis, Dennis, Dennis Richie. It, 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 People like him do fall through the cracks. It's just the way society is. If you're not really, if you're not, let's put it in computer terms and, and layers. If you're the CPU, no one cares. But if you're something on the screen that can be physically seen and understood, interacted with, then it gets all the credit. Even though the CPU is the heart, the heartbeat of what's generated for it. That, that all the underneath of it is is really not given much thought and that's just a, I think a nature of the beast in the way we are but yeah I think I said it I think I said it the best in the comment um, for the gentleman who was uh, asking us to uh, pay respects to uh, Dennis Ritchie is that the, in the way I can say it artistically because we discussed uh, a lot of the creativity and, and art within jobs and design and then, and then my own passions and creativity is that Dennis Ritchie is the man that created the brush and canvas for which we paint on essentially. I mean he's, he's essentially responsible for the for C and co-responsible for the Unix operating system in real time sharing and getting into networking. Uh, so well, and like going back to what you said about the canvas, that that's the thing there. It, it, it's you, 
that it's it's underappreciated. It, you know, when you look at a work of art or something, it's like the the fact that somebody made the brushes and the canvas and the pigments and all the things that enabled that to even exist at all. It's like you say, it's not appreciated. But without them, the artist would have had nothing to make with. Right. And it's it's almost more important than the grand scheme of things. So they, they it, I think it, that'll continue to happen, and, and there, there will be uh, other. I mean, we could. I mean, the truth be the truth be told, though, is that the people that I, I are, think people I, who there, do there is overboard of there is of course overboard of paying respects to Steve Jobs, and it bugs a lot of people that that many people are doing it in the, in the world. And then other people idolize him, so on and so forth. But the thing of it is, is why do we let... If that is the complaint, why let it bother you? There, there's, there's nothing that's really going to change uh, human behavior and, and those people and whether they um, want to pay respects to, to a sports team or um, a, a, a certain specific shirt because it's designed you know, <laughs> for what they like or if it's arguing over operating systems. Everyone has their quirky obsession and idolization of something out there, no matter what. And there's nothing that any of us really can do other than try to inform people. But if we come at it from a position of being antagonistic and saying, God, you're stupid for wanting to idolize Jobs or Gates or Dennis Richie or whatever, I think it, that's originating from the wrong position. And because... Who, 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 is, who is person A to person B to say who they should respect and not respect? Steve Jobs certainly does have a tremendous amount of technical skill behind him uh, that we discussed in, in iWorld that doesn't need to be rehashed. Uh, but Dennis Ritchie also deserves a tremendous amount of respect uh, and, and just as much recognition for his contributions uh, to technology. And I must say that one of the, the strongest Apple pundits out there um, Gruber actually did a post on his on his blog, paying his respects to Dennis Ritchie. So there there are there are those there are the Uber geeks that will uh, pay attention. Then it was sad that the press was so slow to uh, leaking it out, but uh, it is it is what it is. Yeah, I'm gonna say like I I, I was I, I didn't even realize that because like you said it received no coverage. Nobody it it's like it was not known. It's like it slowly eked out. What really? Dang. <laughs> and like you're saying, the geeks are who will appreciate that. The programmers, the people who have an, who have worked with any of the stuff that was created, or they're like, they have a firm appreciation for just how much of a contribution that is. I was going to say, people who are within the industry that are affected from you know what Dennis Ritchie did for the industry will appreciate it a lot more than, unfortunately, the generic populace would. Have. And that's just kind of the way it is, though. Yeah, and, and it's it's unfortunate, but it, uh, unfortunately, it's, it tends to be indicative, really, of any industry. You know, like yeah, we we we're geeks, we know, but let's say we we're fans of another industry that we have no idea the technology behind it. Yeah, we we would have that no course, idea. Yeah, and that of course depends on our personality, because I know a lot of people will try to find out the behind the scenes things. But let's just say. For argument's sake, that uh, we all like something else other than technology, and we're giving praise to some guy, which completely ignores all the people behind it that probably made it possible. But yet, you know, he's the guy for us, or, or, or woman, whatever. And the, I can see the Uber geeks on that side of things saying, "Look at these idiots! They don't, they don't know it. They don't know that these other guys that actually made that stuff happen." So I mean, we're all guilty. Uh, to some yeah, it, it, it's. I mean, it's. It, it's one of those can't see the can't see the forest through the trees types things or the right. trees through the forest. It's just and, unless you really know or dig in, it's you're blissfully unaware of the underpinning right. and their importance. But it also doesn't. It should also not dismiss our praise, even though we don't know the behind the scenes of this other industry. It doesn't mean that that that, that person who we are paying respects to or idolizing, whatever. Uh, doesn't also deserve merit. You know, obviously there is a reason somewhere where that individual garnered our respect, right? So, and, and that in itself cannot be dismissed or disregarded. 
for, just because someone else created a canvas for which this other, this other, this other individual used the tools it built upon. You know, so. Now, well, now it's like for those of you who are wondering, it's like I mean, this, for those of you who have no idea what C is, I mean, it's the, it's, it's one of the more still compiles to it. A yeah. lot of on upper layers still compiles. You know, basically compiled down to C level. Some other up new newer languages and upper level languages have now been made to directly compile to. Well, now, and, and see that—that's the thing. When it comes to newer languages, I mean, people look on older languages like C as—I um, don't want to say overly simplistic because they're anything but. But it's—it's it's one of those things. There's less appreciation for the base languages like that today, unfortunately. Um, and, and, I mean, you know, Linux runs in C. Uh, it's, it's fundamental to Unix. It's, I mean, well, a lot of yeah, a lot of code has moved from C to C plus plus, which is fine. Yeah, uh, w w which is indirectly based on C, anyways. Of course it is. Yeah, of course. so it's you're just changing from procedural. You're, you're changing from procedural to more object oriented, essentially. Um, and then, really, when you try to get to higher level languages. You're basically automating, you're trying to automate many of the lower level functions such as memory management, garbage collection, where things should be allocated, pointed, stacked, and so on and so forth. And higher Which options, can create can mixed results depending on what's going on. <laughs> sure. But it comes, at a, it comes at a cost of the least common denominator for efficiency. Yeah. So. It is a shame, man. It's just uh, probably more fundamental to pretty much core computing. And I like what he said here. Unix is simple, but it just needs a genius to understand its simplicity. <laughs> oh, yeah, dude, there's a lot of quotes from him. That's just... 20% uh, of all input can be filled out with the same I would say it's high and thick. <laughs> oh, no, it's like at the end of the day, he, underst he understood computers very, very well. He understood the logic of them and what that needed to be done. That's Can you imagine if you're frustrated with an assembly? You're saying, i got to write a language to basically move forward from where we are now. And have the limitations that are strictly there. And essentially, that is just literally creating something of it. No, and it's, it solved a lot of problems. It let it let uh, a lot of things just make a big leap far on which a lot of other smaller leaps were allowed to be built. At least he made it, you know, at least he made it to a good old ripe age. You know, he was 70 when he managed to go. He, uh, it's kind of, Fortunately, he managed to live to old age. He managed to, uh, I mean, he could have lived longer, but you know, he was just, he was found by the time, which is kind of the sad thing. Like, he was found, but we really oh, realized he had, no, yeah. nobody really realized he had passed. It was just, he was, like, he was found, and I was like, oh. I know. That, that's, I a, know. that's a sad, that's, okay. Anything else we want to? Steve Jobs, like, I mean, I, there's a tremendous amount of days named after people that none of us will even know about, and I don't think it's. it's a, it, I don't think there's anything wrong with what they're wanting to do if they want to do it. They have a day in California for Steve Jobs is fine. He certainly contributed enough to their economy. Why not? I, I, I guess. I, I, I am with some other people. I'm like, I'm not sure he deserves a, a day. In know? California, but do you know how many other people have days after them in other states? It's not, it's not like a national day. Okay. Oh, no, that's true. God, man, if you go through the calendars and Linux and other open source calendars, boy, there's holidays you ain't never heard about for yada 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 and so forth. Ah. Uh, uh, let I say, reading. Uh, yeah, somebody was telling me to read more. I don't know who actually run this. <laughs> I agree. 
<laughs> That's for that other show, but I definitely agree. <laughs> That's a whole other topic right there. <laughs> I just typed something internally on our show. Yeah, yeah, y'all will find out about it at some point. Don't worry. Uh, <laughs> okay. Let me see. What was, what was this? It seems they have us surrounded. I can't remember now. That's oh, oh yeah. Apparently, just an interesting little fact, getting back on the point, it seems wireless devices now have Americans outnumbered. Okay. Uh, there, there, there are other countries that, you know, have more phones than people. The U.S. is now one of them. And it's like, um, I... I'm wondering who's using these devices. Do we really need them? No, it's, it's, a, it's, a product, it's a product of how fast our turnaround is for this. I mean, we've, it's a commodity at this point, right? There's, there's a tremendous amount of, with anything, uh, in many commodities, where that one commodity can outnumber uh, the whole population. I mean, it's because we go through cycles, so and so forth. I mean, this number um, encompasses a huge amount in terms of from... from all the phones that have, have been used and are going to be used, currently being used, traded and sold, and so forth. See, and that's the thing that honestly has me a little bugged about the fact that we make these devices to be so disposable. I mean, I'm not a... I'm not, that makes them cheaper to us, right? Yeah, I, I know. I'm not an e or anything. It's just, you know, it, I remember when they used to be built to... You know, like you'd have them for a while rather than <laughs> it's like, well, okay, it's been a year, time to throw it away. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, my contract uh, just expired. It's like that because it was hard, the technology was very limited. What, what could you do? Well, we can get away with this gimmick and this gimmick, but we were pumping out a lot of phones. And I remember the days that I would pay one ninety nine for the next tail walkie talkie phone. That was uh, military grade and all this other stuff. Which and now I'm paying 199 for an iPhone or 199 for a Palm Pre or 199 for an HTC Evo. It's funny what we thought was badass back then, of which I was going for. I love and still wish smartphones would have that Nextel walkie-talkie. That it was a true radio. It wasn't the Verizon BS push to talk. Still using the the cell networks. You could. The stuff that could be down, and Nextel's radio would be up. I freaking love the days of, of the Nextel radio. Yeah, but it was a gimmick thing, unfortunately, that only appealed I, to... Are you kidding me? It was useful, but when Sprint bought it, it started to become gimmicky, and it was, you know, it appealed to a handful of people, and it's just unfortunate. Yeah, and, and, see, and my industry was all over the place, because we would use it in IT, and, you know, and communicate everything rather than... Employee. It was, oh my gosh, we used it. Tons. Tons. Yeah, you're talking to somebody who ever so often goes around tromping around in the hill country, and you know, you don't want a cell phone. You want a little radio going. Yeah. It's like, it just works, dang it. <laughs> it's like... Uh-huh. Uh, it's like, unfortunately, it's looking like we don't have particles that go faster than light. Or at least that's what the person who's disputing the thing they found, they're saying, no, you didn't properly take your relativity into effect. You don't have the faster than light particle. Like, oh, they'll be debating back and forth on that. <laughs> like, I, I think the statement I made here, your FTO needs more relativity pretty much sums it up. <laughs> this, this but, is, yeah, let's read this, but check this out. This is kind of interesting. It says, the results prove that Americans love wireless and continue to rely on the most cutting-edge innovative devices and services in the world, which... Is, is speaking to of cycles, right? Because they're wanting always the most cutting edge. We want always the latest and greatest, right? Clearly, we're using wireless more every day, and the consensus of experts is that demand will continue to skyrocket by more than 50 times within the next five years. Uh, these are the reasons why our members need more spectrum. So, uh, if we if that will change, I would say when the, every technology also goes through cycles. Yeah, I'm going to say, I, 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 I'm thinking this is a bubble. I don't think it's going to continue to grow unchecked like this indefinitely. That's yeah. But it's, it's, it's a spectrum crunch combined with the release of faster and more data-hungry devices has prompted some carriers to pull back on unlimited data offerings. Now, this is what we have been discussing in countless amount of shows in the U.S. I, I don't see how they can continue to push it. Yep. Sprint is the only major 
major U.S. provider with truly unlimited data offering at this point. Let's see if that remains to be true, Sprint, now that you have the iPhone. I'm very curious to see what, you, what Sprint is going to do. Well, and then there's the fact that Sprint has invested so much in WiMAX as opposed to LT, and it's just, it, it, it's, Sprint's kind of on their last legs regardless of what's going on. It, wasn't, wasn't uh, Clear Network to use WiMAX? Yes. Well, they're the ones that are out there before Verizon, and now it's all I see is Clear everywhere. So I, I don't know, I don't think that, I don't think that necessarily Sprint is on, on that. I see, I, I, I'm wanting to say, well, why? I mean, Sprint obviously is hurting because we're, we're living right now where the iPhone is the hottest product to, to, to want to get. It's like, you know, it's like the next, uh, what were those, uh, my friend, we were discussing it with my uh, colleague, and he said his kids love this, uh, gosh damn it, what's the name of the clothes they like? It's these clothes that have, uh, that I think are not that great looking, but uh, what's it? So something Fitch, Fitch, uh, something in Fitch. You're talking uh, to the wrong person. I became an old person. I have a in something. I have a company, I, I may be slaughtering the whole thing, but it's, it's this brand and it's like popular. And it's all made in the same damn country as any other, like that this shirt is. And, uh, uh, <laughs> uh, but it, it sells like hotcakes. That's the thing. And right now, uh, these, these carriers are competing um, for the hottest devices, and, then, and, and, there's, and, and the iPhone is not, not the only one. Obviously, Android has a couple of, uh, of phones that are out there that are also um, in demand. I remember HTC Evo. Sprint couldn't keep up with the demand at HTC Evo. They kept running out of them. So I think that we'll see how the iPhone fares. I, I think that anybody who's getting the iPhone 4S and can switch carriers should to Sprint, and, I mean, because Sprint's got some of the beta, the, the, the best data plans. Out. They have, they are the only ones with a data plan you want to buy right now. That's the real problem. It's like, there's some great Android phones coming out right now. Uh, there's a Motorola uh, Razor. It's a great LTE 4G phone, but it's on Verizon only, so you are you don't want it. Uh, same thing with the one Google just announced that Samsung makes, even though I really don't like Samsung right now, but it's not a bad phone. The one they just announced uh, tonight, the uh, what is it, the uh, Nexus, Nexus Prime. Nexus Prime, yeah, like they're great phones, but they're not on Sprint. It's like it's. I'm I'm sorry. It, it's I I will not do this two gig AT and T or blog gig for. I'm not gonna play. It's. Give me an unmetered plan or go home. That's I know. I, that's why. I'm, that's why I'm encouraging. The only way we can get more vendors want to participate with Sprint. Obviously, a vendor is saying, "I want to sell my product to the greatest reach." And if that means exclusivity, i.e., HTC, and then selling Droid, of which Verizon is the branding of Droid, HTC is going to go. Well, they have exclusive rights to it. They're a larger reach. In terms of demographics. Well, so, and most of the current droids I mean, are Motorola. <laughs> so, I mean, it's or is it is it Motorola? I thought it was HTC. Okay. Uh, they they well, both. That's where it gets confusing. Both HTC and Motorola make droid phones. Well, yes, yeah, it's because droid is the, the Verizon phone. thing. Yeah. That's Verizon phone. So um, that's why it was Motorola the first droid. But so they get all this exclusivity. And the problem is, is, is that Sprint is still seen as this little guy who goes, yeah, we'll give you some of our scraps off the table. And I hope that if enough people move using the iPhone, um, that the demographic and consumer, you know, consumer reach will expand for Sprint and then make, make Sprint much more attractive. And, and maybe Verizon and AT&T will listen to that migration and go, okay... We heard you. We'll, we'll bring it. It's going to cost this much, but here's the unmetered plan. You know, it's. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yep. So, yeah. I mean, it's. it's what, what does Dark have to say? Having being someone that's on an un. or let me rephrase this, was on an unlimited plan for Verizon. Um, Sprint's looking better and better, seeing how I just found out they're going to be throttling my internet now. 
if I go over a certain data gap. So it's like, I'm not too keen on that. Well, <laughs> so and, I, I'm and seriously considering jumping. Tiny has the same problem. I mean, just before we started taping here, he looked at his internet usage and said, oh, month's not over and I'm at 5.8 gig. I would have got a massive overage bill. <laughs> He's like he's like afraid to go buy a new phone of any kind now because he knows they'll force him to change his plan. <laughs> I know and that sucks. God, I hate, I hate to break my No, they, I they really, will. I really, I guess I really, just, I, everything should just go voice over IP. Like, if if the carriers are going to keep bottlenecking us because their technology for mobile telecom is just that hard logistically to do. Then Forget it. Let's just use their tower. Well, no, but they're, they're making it that much worse because, uh, I mean, Comcast is throttling home connections. AT&T is throttling home connections. It's like, it's, we need to send a, the, the consumer needs to send an ultimatum. But see, here's the thing. We can't, the, the problem is we can't just say, fine, we don't want internet at all. It's like, we, that's not practical. Yeah. So, like, they know, oh, where, where, where are you going to go? You have to come to us. <laughs> it's like... I mean, like, take, take Sweden. They killed the network. It's just... I mean, we're the United States of America, for crying out loud. And we, and we have one of the shittiest broadband connection speeds known to man. And, and then we have providers bitching about maintaining it and whining and whining and whining. Oh, you need to pay more. Nothing freaking gets better. You know, and, and, and here in the United States, instead of making it faster, we just lower the standards. Uh, yeah, no, that that's the saddest it's thing. Plus becomes 4G all of a sudden. Well, no, that was why I just turned my cable off, because that's what they're literally doing. They upgraded their software without upgrading any of their hardware, so not one of their boxes works. Then they upped the price, then they upped it again, then less stuff stopped working because they tweaked the software more. I had had it. I'm like, you're charging more and more and more, providing less and less and less, Goodbye. Unfortunately, you can't do that when it comes to your internet connection because you don't have a good alternative to get it from. But it, it, it it's like you're saying, we're continually lowering the standard of what rather than actually fixing and addressing the problem. It's 